Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint some autumn trees and I'm going to give you some specific tips on mixing autumn colours for leaves. Now this painting that I'm going to show you in this video is inspired by a place called Glenorchy in southern New Zealand and it's been planted with lots of European broadleaf trees including poplars and willows. And I was just sifting through my photo reference and this particular photo of this Lombardy poplar tree caught my eye and I just right there and then was like I'm going to paint this. So I'll show you some of the process of this little painting that I did. Now, before I begin the video, I'm just going to address the elephant in the room. It's spring here in New Zealand, the weather's been nice today, and I caught the sun on my boat race. What are you going to do? Anyway, <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get into it. I'm painting on an 8 inch by 10 inch linen panel. And this is a medium weave Belgium linen that's oil primed mounted to Baltic birch, which is pre-made. And I got them from a company called SourceTech at canvaspanels.com. And I've put a link to their website in the description box below. Now, generally I love painting on canvas panels and that's what I paint on most of all. I like the rigid surface, they're easy to paint on. They're also great for plain air paintings. And they're also very easy to frame as well. Now I'm using oil paint here, but you could also use acrylics to paint this. And the paints I'm using are a brand called Blue Ridge Oils. And the colours I'm using include Titanium White, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Yellow, Cadmium Orange, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue and Thalo Green. Now if you want to get your hands on some Blue Ridge Oil paint, they're available from blueridgeoilpaint.com and I've put the link in the description box below. I absolutely love these oil paints. They're an artist quality oil and they're just really nice to paint with. So I've got everything all ready here. My canvas panel on my Peshaw box easel, my reference photo and sketch on my computer. And I start sketching out the composition with burnt sienna that's mixed with liquid original. And what this does is it thins the paint and it speeds up the drying time. So very useful if you want to get lots of paintings done. So I'm sketching out the composition with a number one round brush. And the main feature of this painting is obviously the Lombardi poplar tree. So I outline that. Now one thing to note about the composition is you never really want anything in the middle of your composition. And in this case, the Lombardi poplar tree is obviously the main area of interest in the painting. So what I've done is I've set it off to the left of the center, so it's not in the middle, which also makes a more engaging painting. Centered objects are too predictable and they just cause a displeasing static within the composition. And in general, they just spoil it. Now, once I've sketched out the composition, the first thing I think about is where are all the dark values and shadows in the scene? And if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll hear me talk about this often because I normally paint all my dark values and shadows first. Value refers to how light or dark a subject is. And the reason we want to get these in first is it makes it much easier to create atmospheric depth within your painting. So for example, distant landforms will look like they're in the distance. We'll find our darkest darks in the foreground as well as our lightest lights, but in the distance darks are not as dark and lights are not as light, and that's because the value scale narrows. So here I begin marking out the mountain that's in the background, and it's in shadow anyway. Plus I don't want to draw too much attention to it, so there's no detail in it at all. But I've used a mix of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna, a little alizarin crimson and titanium white. Now the burnt sienna in the blue, because it's a dark orange, desaturates it because orange is opposite to blue on the colour wheel. So it takes the intensity out of the blue. I mark this in with a number 5 flat brush. And then I'm actually using the same colours for the clouds, but with much more titanium white, so that the value's a lot lighter. I keep the mixture more with a blue cast. I don't use too much burnt sienna so that the colour doesn't look muddy. And I again mark this in with a number five flat brush. So the other main shadows are all in the foreground and next I'm going to paint the shadows in the vegetation at the base of the trees. And this is a mix of mainly yellow ochre with ultramarine blue. 
For some of these grassy areas I've also mixed in some burnt sienna as well. Once I've marked in the shadows in the bushes and grass in the foreground, I then paint the main shadows in the tree canopy of this Lombardy poplar. So I'll demonstrate how to mix this on my palette and I'm using a mix of yellow ochre with alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. Now let's just talk about the colour yellow. It's a light value colour and if you want to see its value, take a photo of all your colours on your palette and then switch your photo to black and white and you'll see that yellow is one of the lightest value colours. Of course white is the lightest. So with yellow being one of the lighter value colours and that we're painting autumn yellow coloured foliage in the trees here, this needs to be reflected in the shadows. The shadows of these trees are not going to be as dark as they would be if the trees were still green. So with the shadow mix I'm using for the tree canopy here, I've used more yellow ochre and alizarin crimson in the mix. And the shadows generally a mid-tone. I'm marking in the tree canopy here again with a number 5 flat brush. And these are the brushes I mainly use for a lot of my paintings. Flat brushes, I just love the marks and effects that you get with them. Now the brand of brushes I'm using are made by Rosemary & Co at rosemaryandco.com and if you want to get your hands on some Rosemary & Co brushes I'll put the link in the description box below. So now I've marked in my main areas of shadows within the painting I'm going to work back from the furthest zone away, the sky and clouds and then work my way forward. So I'll begin painting some highlights in the clouds this is mainly a mix of titanium white with some burnt sienna and then I paint the sky, which is a mix of ultramarine blue and titanium white. Moving forward in the painting, I'm coming back to the Lombardi poplar tree and now I'm going to paint that golden yellow foliage that's in the full sunlight. So now I'll show you how to mix the colours for the autumn foliage of this Lombardi poplar on my palette. And this is a good kind of mix for autumn colours in general. I start off by mixing some yellow ochre and then I add some cadmium yellow which is really going to increase the saturation. Then I add some cadmium orange and some titanium white which will not only lighten the value of the colour but also desaturate it as well. I found that this colour combination creates a nice orangey golden yellow colour. And I apply the paint here with a number 5 flat brush. Now I use a similar colour for the tree canopies of these willows that are just behind this Lombardi poplar but I mix in some more titanium white and a little bit more cadmium yellow. I then add the shadows within these willow trees using a mix of ultramarine blue, some yellow ochre and a little bit of burnt sienna. I paint the grass and the vegetation in the foreground using a varying mix of yellow ochre, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And I vary these colours so that I get different hues coming through. I also use, if needed, a little bit of titanium white, but I keep in mind that the value of the grass and vegetation is in shadow. It's also late evening as well, so just before the sun setting. So the value here of the grass in the foreground is relatively dark. Now once I'd marked in the major zones in the painting, I then went back across the whole thing and just filled in various gaps and tidied up the painting. Also painting in things like sky holes within the tree's canopy. This is where the sky or the background mountains are coming through. Now during the block-in stage, I was trying to get as much information down as I possibly could so that when I come to the next session on the painting, or I'm adding more detail, I don't need to do as much work. So I pretty much treated this painting like a plein air painting, i.e. as if I was painting outdoors on location. So I added the suggestion of a network of main stems and branches, and I mixed a combination of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and alizarin crimson. I marked in these branches with a number one round brush. Following that, I added a few more extra details to the tree's canopy, and the bushes and the grass in the foreground and then I left the painting to dry. Now at the end of the blocking stage it's here that I want to check that the painting is working and that the colours and values look right as well and basically that I've got a good foundation that I can then build some detail on once it's dry. The 
The painting is dry here and this was the last session I spent on this particular painting because all there was to do was just to add some detail and add some highlights and areas of lighter value. Now with all my paintings I save my lightest values until pretty much towards the end of the painting and it's adding these light values that really brings the painting to life. So throughout my painting I always keep my colours a little bit tonally darker so that I've got plenty of space to move and work with when I can add lighter layers. I'm pretty much using the same colours that I used during the blocking stage for this next painting session. I work on the clouds and sky again, just adding another layer. Also just covering up where the canvas is coming through the paint. Because I'm painting on a white surface, if the paint's a bit too thin it can come through, so I wanted to make sure that it's properly covered. And it was also an opportunity to build up more form and definition within the Lombardi poplar tree, especially painting some of those sky holes. I added some more layers to the shadow areas within the Lombardi poplar tree's canopy, but I made some of those layers a bit lighter so that I can communicate some reflected light within the tree's canopy. And again, it's the same colours that I used during the blocking stage, so yellow ochre with some alizarin crimson, and some ultramarine blue, but a bit less ultramarine blue this time to make the value a bit lighter. I spent some time working on the small bushes and the grass and vegetation in the foreground, just adding some more layers, mainly lighter than the previous layers to build up the three dimensional form of that grass and just add some randomness to it. And again, using the same colours that I used during the blocking stage, a mix of yellow ochre, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Now, one thing you might notice with my paintings, especially this one, is I use a more limited palette, so I'm using less colours. But what this does is it helps to create colour harmony within the painting. And this means that the painting is nice to look at and it reads well to the viewer and they might not even know why it looks nice. Well, the way we can create colour harmony is to use common colours throughout the painting so that it ties all the different zones together. This is why I prefer to use less colours in my painting and also it helps you to understand colour much better as well as helping to improve your colour mixing skills. Now here I'm adding some highlights to the poplar trees canopy, saving my lightest values until the end of the painting. And here I've used the same colours that I used during the blocking stage, but I've made the value lighter. So a mix of yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange and titanium white. But I've used more titanium white and cadmium yellow in my mix. I've actually found that these number five flat brushes are really good for painting tree foliage. Now, another way you can improve your tree painting skills is to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. All helps with the algorithm and all that stuff, however that works. And if you want to delve further into landscape painting and painting seascapes, all sorts of things really, check out the free painting resources I have on my website at samuelerp.com. I've got a painting blog there where I've got loads of free written painting tutorials that you can copy and follow along with. There's also some reference photos to use. And as well as that, I've got some full length painting tutorial videos available from my website. And this is where I'd go much deeper into a particular subject of landscape painting, where I'll show you a painting from start to finish and everything that goes along with it. Especially mixing the colors which I demonstrate on my palette. And one thing I do in my videos is I try and integrate some art theory with it. So I know art theory as a subject can be a bit dry. So what I do is I put it in the context of the paintings that I'm demonstrating so you can learn as you paint. Now you can also get instant access to all of my painting videos, plus a new video every month by subscribing to my Patreon channel for just $5 a month or $51 a year if you pay for an annual subscription. And I've put the link in the description box below. Also, if you subscribe to my email list, I'm giving away a free ebook called Introduction to Oil Painting. So check that out. Again, links in the description box below. Now, going back to the painting here, I finish it up by painting the main stems and branches within the tree. And I'm using a number one round brush. And then I just finish up the painting by just adding a few extra details here and there. Mostly within the foreground, but just tidying up the whole painting in general. 
So I hope you enjoyed this painting video and it inspires you to paint some trees. And if you want to have a go at this particular painting, then check out the link to the written notes that accompanies this video, which I've put in the description box below. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.